Hi, good morning, bubblers. It is Sunday morning, and I had a little bit of time here. So um, there's something I discovered uh, this past week using Bubbles' new, uh, where they're exposing the width of an element, uh, where you get the width and the, and the height of that element. So the, the problem I was trying to solve was a clear card we have on your dashboard uh, where you can see your cards and your credit cards and we show like a, a visual representation of your credit card that has uh, balances and 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 all that stuff on it and so one of the issues I've been running into uh, was it's difficult to maintain the, the proper aspect ratio right so depending on the screen size it would get wide um, you like a wide and short card and or like skinny and and tall and and uh so it's kind of something that's been sitting there and and been needing to be fixed but um i finally actually got around to it last week and was able to use uh, the the value that bubble's exposing programmatically now in the expression where you can get a you know this group's width um and it's working great right and so then i had thought because there was always this other issue and i've seen it mentioned a couple of times where when you're working with focus groups especially when you're creating uh like a custom drop down and you can't make that focus group uh you can't make that focus group be the width of whatever's triggering it so maybe you have uh maybe you have an input that's triggering a focus group and that input can can be wider or or skinnier depending on the screen size, but you can't control the actual width of your of your focus group that's that is connected to it. So when that when your drop down comes down, it may be skinnier than your input, or maybe wider than your input. But anyway, that is uh, resolvable now with a little bit of CSS and using that uh, that width uh, value that bubble exposes now. So just going to run through and build this real quick and show you how to do that. So let's get started. I'm going to go ahead and put this into a reusable element um, just because that's typically uh, where this would be used probably. And it makes it very easy for me to kind of throw multiple elements onto a page uh, to show how the widths are working. Um, so we'll just call this uh, dynamic width focus group that works. And let's go ahead and make this responsive. All right, and then let's see. Um, I'm gonna set this to align to parent because there's a couple of things that, uh, that I'm gonna want in here and I'm just gonna lay them in here first before I get anything else on here. I want an HTML element. Um, and this will just be our CSS. And let's make this fixed. And we'll just do one by one. Um, we can give it five. Yeah, no, we'll do one one. It doesn't matter. We can access it from the elements tree. All right, so we have uh, HTML and then we need a group. So let's grab group here. Drop it in. Um, this can be fixed. It doesn't matter. We'll make it one by one as well. This is going to be an ID. So this group, the purpose of this group is uh, because we're using CSS and we're going to use the same CSS across multiple elements. Um, and we can only add an ID to a bubble element. And you can only have a single ID uh, that's impacted by, uh, by the CSS on a page. So what, what we're using this group for is to, we're going to use the uh, calculate formula and we're going to create a, a random string. We'll just say 12 characters and we'll use letters. So we're going to use this value here as a unique ID for each uh, reusable element that is put on the page. Okay. So let's go ahead and grab a button from frames here. We'll just grab that top one and paste it right there. And then let's uh, take the fit to width to content off. 
for the min width or the min height on our um, on our actual reusable fit to the button. And so the button is going to be our trigger element here. And we're going to align the uh, the focus group to the button. So we'll just grab a focus group now. And we're not going to put anything in this focus group. This focus group is simply um, is simply something we're just showing how the how the width works. So we, our reference element would be the button, and I should just show that focus group here. All right, let's just offset the top a little bit, and then uh, we don't want it to be fixed width, so we'll set it uh, so zero min width, and um, you can set a max width on it. Uh, I'm not going to. Um, for this, but you can set a max width on it and 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 make it smaller so that uh, you know for designing whatever you're going to put in that focus group. But for our purposes, we'll just leave it like this. This is all we need. Um, we're going to remove this style so we can actually see what we're doing when we're on the page. And let's give this a border. All right, got a little roundness there. All right, cool. So. Uh, on this focus group, then we want to go down here. So we have the ID elements or the ID attribute checked in our settings, and so here we're going to set this ID on this focus group to the ID on that that group. So remember, this is this group here where we're calculating the random string. And so here on the focus group, then we're just going to say we're going to grab that group, which is named ID, and we'll just say text. All right, so that just is going to allow our CSS to folk to to target this element by that ID. All right, and then uh, let's go ahead and add the action here to show the focus group. So we'll say show an element, and we'll do group focus. I always call them focus groups, but I guess a group focus. I don't know. Um, and then I'm going to add one. Uh, one condition here on this button, and this is just kind of a side note, but I find toggle, the toggle action doesn't work well for focus groups. And so uh, my preferred way of doing this is saying, so when that uh, group focus is visible, then I make the element that's triggering it unclickable. And so when we, when we click the button and it's not open, it'll show the focus group, but then if we click the button again, when the focus group is open, it's like clicking anywhere else on the page. It's just going to shut. It's just going to close the focus group. So, um, okay, perfect. And now we need to add uh, just a little bit of CSS here. And so we'll go into our HTML element that we've named CSS. We'll open the editor, and we'll say style. Remember, you always have to enclose uh, CSS inside your style tags. And so I'm going to do ID which is going to be uh, the hashtag pound sign. I'm going to leave that empty for now because we have to make that dynamic and then we'll give it curly bracket, curly bracket. And then in here, we'll say width, leave it blank and then have pixel. Um, and then we'll add important. Okay. So now that we have that done in this, here where we can set uh, dynamic content, we'll set the ID to again be the ID, that group IDs text, which is going to be a random ID. Um, and by the way, the reason we do just letters there is just to make sure it works because you can't start an ID with a number or anything like that. All right, and then we're going to grab the width, and this is important. So we're actually going to grab the width of the reusable element so we would think we would grab the width of the button but the way bubble generates this width is they don't account for padding right so on this button uh, you can see we have uh, left and right padding of 12 pixels so if in this 
CSS here where we're setting this width value. If we get the button's width, that's going to set our focus group to be 24 pixels skinnier than the actual button. So what we want to do is we'll just grab the uh, the reusable itself. We'll get the width, and then that should do what we need. All right, then I'll jump over here, and I've got a little page set up so we can drop this element in and don't have to set that page up. But um, what was it? It was dynamic width focus group. All right, so we drop one in there. I'll just copy and paste and paste. And let's see, let's go ahead and preview this. All right, so there we have focus groups, right width, focus groups, right width, and focus group is the right width. So, um, yep, hope that's helpful, guys. Uh, less complicated than it sounds. It's, it's quite simple, actually, but uh, let me know if you have any questions. And hopefully that helps make your drop downs a little more uh, streamlined and a little cleaner uh, with your UI. So, cheers. Happy day, guys.